G'day fellas and girls. Hope you're all good for another science video because in this one I'm going to try and take a photo of a speeding bullet with a sugar cube. So I've got everything assembled out in the shed. I'm going to be using the Savage 24 to fire a 22 long rifle cartridge into a sugar cube and we'll see the effect of that. But for now I've got to wait until it gets dark. So I'm going to be using the Sony Nex 5N camera pointed at the sugar cube which will be triggered by a remote which will set a two second countdown. The shutter will open, then I'll fire, then the shutter will close. Now I'm going to have to work under complete darkness. But I will set up the infrared light for you to see what's happening. Little bit of trouble with the IR remote in that I had the bloody thing pointing backwards. And let's see what the camera saw. And there's the bullet. But how did that happen? Well the key is in these cracks that are forming as the bullet hits the sugar cube. So let's have a look and see why that's significant. If we take a sugar crystal and smash it apart breaking those bonds holding the crystal together you end up with an uneven charge distribution. And to regain a neutral charge the electrons will arc over creating a flash of light as it excites the nitrogen in the air in a process known as triboluminescence. Now the problem with this is the wavelength from excited nitrogen peaks in the invisible ultraviolet spectrum and we're only seeing that tailing edge as it passes into the violet and blue colours. So what I'm going to try and do is move that emittance curve further into the visible wavelengths by a process that I'm sure you've heard of before, fluorescence. So what I have is oil of winter green, which chemically speaking is methyl salicylate. And I'm going to add a few drops of that onto the sugar cube. Now what this is going to do is absorb the high energy ultraviolet light and re-emit it at a lower energy, longer wavelength in the blue spectrum. So we should get a more intense flash from that sugar cube. So same setup as before. And while it's definitely a brighter flash, it's not necessarily a better photo. And one explanation for that might be the bullet's now creating a longer flash, longer duration as it passes through the full thick sugar cube. And that's responsible for the blurred photo. Anyway, let's do it a few more times anyway, with a variety of camera settings and additives. I also added some aluminium foil underneath to try and reflect the light to get more definition in the sides but it didn't really work. Anyway, hopefully you've learnt something about triboluminescence and fluorescence as well as something about how high speed photography is done as opposed to high speed videography which requires a fast camera High speed photography, while it doesn't use sugar cubes per se, it uses a very fast flash triggered at exactly the right moment. Anyway, hopefully I've done enough to earn your thumbs up down there below. It is the only thing that keeps this channel going. And look out for this topic reinvestigated in the future, where I might just shoot a whole bloody box of sugar cubes with a shotgun. I'll see you there.